Cars, the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 217 regarding a dead body in San Luis Creek. Ascertain identity of victim. That's all. Rolls and clips. siren of a police car, ambulance, or fire engine, I am reminded of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. It isn't strange either. For over four years, I have been repeating this statement. More police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment are powered by Rio Grande cracked wherever it is sold than any other brand. Friends, that really means something to me. The fact that these public serving cars use Rio Grande exclusively is proof enough that it is a superior motor fuel. Recently, this has been more forcefully brought to my attention. For now, both the state of California and the federal government are also specifying Rio Grande cracked gasoline for their motors. Now, all governmental branches are using Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Why then don't you too use this gasoline that is so obviously the leader in quality among men and organizations that no gasoline vest? Drive into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station tomorrow and every tomorrow and fill up with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. I know that once you give it a fair trial, you'll use no other brand. Tonight, we take pleasure in presenting a message from Sheriff Harry E. Haskins of San Luis Obispo County. When Cain picked up a rock and bashed in the head of his brother Abel, he started a train of crimes that has never ceased. But as civilization advances, it becomes more and more complex. The story we are to hear tonight occurred years ago in our community, but crime was no more a paying proposition then than it is now. We worked just as hard in those days to convince the criminal of the error of his ways as we do now, and we usually succeeded in convincing him. I have been asked if I thought programs of the sort we are about to present have any deterring effect on crime and criminals. I believe that any sort of presentation of the truth that crime does not pay has a deterring effect on the potential criminal. I am most heartily in favor of bringing that fact home to everyone. You going to town, Charlie? Yeah, I got to cash my check. You better be careful. Some slicker will take it away from you. Oh, not me. I'm on the lookout for smart guys. I thought you were broke. Well, I borrowed a couple of bucks from Jim Gambin. I'm going to bring him some snuff. You didn't talk to brought your fist? Yeah. You know, I've been meaning to get some stocks, but I haven't been in the town since last payday. <laughs> I don't see why that bird called tour of yours don't cut your shoe out, let alone your sock. Nah, uh, don't give me much trouble. You haven't Joe flagged the local? Yeah, if I don't get back tomorrow night, don't worry about me. I'll tell you coming back tomorrow night. Sunday is Washington's birthday. Monday will be a holiday anyway. Might as well take Monday off, too. We won't be working. Well, I might do that. I'm a little tired of staying out here in the work cars anyway. You better stay sober, though. I don't worry. You know me. Two drinks, and I start giving away everything I got. You better be getting on the rattle of Charlie. They'll be pulling out without you. So long, boss. See you Monday night. So long, Charlie. What are you, Sam? Oh, these confounded mules keep shying away from this place every time I get to it. I've been trying all day to get that hole filled in. Must be something wrong along here, huh? Them mules usually got better brains than people. Why don't you try to see what it is? I've been looking all day. Hey, wait a minute. You see that pan down in the creek? The sun's shining on it and it's reflecting right up in the mule's eyes. Yeah, but it hasn't been doing that all morning. Here it is, one o'clock, and these rat tails have been doing this all day. Well, 
Well, let's go down there and see if there's something we can't see. Oh, what if there is? What good will that do if we can't see it? Well, maybe we can see it. Come on. Let's take a look. All right. I still think it's a waste of time. Yeah, I hope them dumb mules have sense enough to stand still till we get back. Oh, they'll be okay. Hey, gosh, this this bank's steep right here. Let's go down a little ways. Ah, we're going to make it. Come on. Hey, Hey, wait a minute. What's that? Look at that. What was a deal? It's a man. And the the pan is over his face. He must have been dead for weeks. Oh, let's get out of here. Yeah, we got to get the sheriff. You can phone him. I'm leaving. Boy, I'm glad to get away from there. Uh, let's get that phone up at the roadhouse. Uh, no wonder the mules didn't want to go by that place, huh? Looks like I would have found out about it before this. Uh, you probably were too busy trying to figure the mules out. I guess so. Uh, somebody must have pitched that guy over the bank. You don't think he walked there, do you? Uh, how long do you think he's been here? Uh, 50 weeks, anyway. Well, here's the phone. Who are you going to call? Charlie Younglove. You got a nickel? Uh, yeah, but here. Uh, Give me the sheriff's office. Why don't you call the police? Outside of town, ain't it? It's a job for the sheriff. Hello, sheriff's office? Well, look. Look, there's a dead man laying in the creek bed out by Evans's Roadhouse. Uh-huh. He's about 90 or 100 yards along the road towards Santa Margarita. Yeah, he's laying on his back. Yeah, yeah, he's been dead a long time. Okay, I'll stick around. I'll tell you the place when you come out. He'll be right out. What are you going to do? Wait for him. Oh, come on. Let's get something to do. <laughs> Right down there, Sheriff. See him? Yeah. Right where the pan is? That's it. Yeah, we might as well get down there. Didn't disturb anything, did you? No, sir. What's the matter? He won't bite you. Maybe not, but I don't want nothing to do with him. Yeah, come on. Tell me how you get down there. Yeah, it's right over here, on the side of that bush. All right. Yeah. Well, there are the thorns in this brush. Yeah, I tore my clothes half off this afternoon. Yeah. Hmm. He's dead, all right. You're telling me? Let's get this pan off. Good Lord. What's the matter? This man's been shot. What? Right through the temple. Murder. Yeah. There's another hole in his chest. Hmm. Hey, look at this wire. There. Around his waist, tying his hands down. Yeah. And there's another one around his ankles here. I knew this guy was dumped off the road up yonder. Well, there's nothing we can do here. I'll have the coroner load him up and haul him into town. I want to get a statement from me at the inquest. Better keep in touch with me. Sure, I will, Sheriff. Next morning, Sheriff Young Love meets with District Attorney Charles A. Palmer to discuss the case. The coroner tells me the man has been dead uh, probably three weeks. Any identification? No more than you brought in. So far, all we got is the empty pocketbook, the coat, and the card we found in his pocket. That's all. Whoever did this saw to it that there were no marks left in the coat. They had thrown out all the lining and all laundry marks. Where's that card again? Uh, here. Here, here, here it is. Cozy Corner. Mm-hmm. That's the saloon at Hagera and Osso Street. Yeah, yeah, no. Here's Frank Barcellus's name written on the back. I saw that. Hey, isn't he the fellow who bought that place a few weeks ago? Yeah. I wonder if he knows who could have done this. Well, anybody's a suspect, you know. Yeah, that's right. Look into that later. Got that wire in here that the coroner took off the body? Yeah, right here in the corner. Aluminum, eh? That's right. Did you see this before it was taken off? Yeah, why? Notice how it was wrapped and cut? Mm, no, not particularly. Look, this wire was pulled tight and twisted in a way that only an experienced wire man twists wire. So? And it was cut off at this angle, see? Mm-hmm. That means side cutters were used. Pliers such as the lineman carry. Yeah, I see. And this wire is part of a heavier cable. You can see the marks along the edges here. That's made by the other wire being wound or twisted with a strain. Which means? That this wire is from one of the power company's jobs. Mm. And that narrows the search right down to a multitude. Well, it isn't as hard as it sounds. In the first place, we can eliminate lots of fellows who work for the company from our list of suspects. We know dozens of them who wouldn't even think of a thing like this. Still leaves a big bunch. Next, we've got to assume that our man is a big man. Why? Because only a big man would be able to draw the wire as tight as this fellow did. Well, maybe he had help. Even so, one man did the twisting on this wire and the cutting. 
And all the ends are twisted alike, and all of them are cut alike. Mm. You're right there. Shouldn't be so difficult to check up on a big man working for the power company at about the time this man disappeared. Yeah, it's obvious that whoever did this hauled the body out there and dumped it out. It's also obvious that he went as far as the road would allow him to go. We know how long the road has been open to that point, and we can check back from there. That's right. But the main thing right now is to find out who the murdered man is. And there you picked a sweet job for yourself. According to the coroner's report, the empty purse has the letter CQ on it. That's right. That check was Bill Cook about missing persons. Maybe he's got a report I haven't seen. Give me that phone, will you? Thanks. Okay, Listen, young lady, get me Chief of Police Cook, will you? Right away, sir. Now, see if he's heard anything from many of his men on this case. He's working on it, too. Yes, Chief Cook, sir. Go ahead. Thanks. Hello, Bill. Charlie Younglove. How are you, Charlie? Fine. Say, Bill, I'm trying to identify that body we found out in Abyssal Creek. We got a pocketbook over here in Palmer's office that's got the initial CQ on it. You got a missing person report and anybody like that? Well, I don't think so. Hey, wait a minute. I'll take a look at this stuff on my desk. Something might have come in today. Okay. You think you may have something in the stuff on his desk? Huh. If it's anything like my desk, you'll never find it. Oh, well, Charlie. Yeah, Bill. Here. I got it several days ago that mentions a Charlie Quinn. You think that could be it? Where's it from? From a fellow named Tom Dignan. He's a foreman on an F.C. crew up at Serrano. Now, wait a minute, and I'll, I'll read it to you. He goes on to say, Charlie Quinn, the man I'm writing you about, left camp on the night of February 21st. He was going to spend a couple of days in San Luis Obispo and was supposed to be back at work on the 23rd. He was coming in to cash his paycheck, and since he still had $25 coming to him from his February time, I'm sure he must have had some kind of trouble or he would have been back. Maybe he got drunk and got in jail. If so, please notify me as to the amount of the fine, and I'll send it to you. He's a good man, and we need him back in camp. Now, you think this Charlie Quinn might be a man? He might be. How about sending this Dignan fellow wire to run down here and take a look at the body? Maybe he can identify him. All right, I'll do it right away. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Well, that's the lead anyway. <laughs> I'm right in here, Mr. Dignan. Now, here's the body we've been worrying about. Wait till I get this sheet off. There. No use to worry about the face. You can't tell anything from that. You notice this fella had long black hair. Mm. You're right about that, all right. Let's see the hands. Mm-hmm. Looks like Charlie's hands, all right. Now, here's the most positive identification I can give you, Sheriff. What's that? There's a big toe here. You see that nail? Yeah, I noticed that before. It's almost an inch and a half long, wouldn't you say? Just about. That's Charlie Quinn, all right. I'd know that toenail anyway. We kidded about lots of times. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. You got his clothes around here? I can tell from them, too. Yeah, yeah, right here in this drawer. There you are. Yeah. That's Charlie's coat, all right. I gave it to him myself. He had it on. One of my shirts I gave him. White one with pink stripes. That's the one? Yeah. That's it. How about his shoes? He had a new pair. Oh, yeah. Here they are. They don't look like Charlie's shoes, though. His was new. Well, these shoes were new when we brought them in. He had to disinfect everything, though. That's what makes the shoes look so old. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that you got Charlie Quinn's body on that slab. Well, that settles that. Now, it's just a question of who killed him. Well, Sheriff, that's something I can't help you on. Nope. But I've got a sneaking hunch that Frank Baselis can. Who's he? He's a fellow whose name we found on a card in Quinn's pocket. I think I'll run over and have a chat with Frank. <laughs> Nice place here, Frank. Yeah, 
try to keep it that way, Sheriff. Much business? Oh, fair. Advertise? Yeah. There ain't nothing but a few cards now and then. That's one of them? Yes, let's see. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my cards. I wrote the name on the back for a fellow I gave to check for. When was that? Oh, uh, two or three weeks ago. Remember the fellow? Uh, sure. He's been in a couple of times since I took over the joint. He works for the SP up at Toronto, I believe. What's his name? Uh, uh, Charlie Quinn, I think. You seen him lately? No, not since I cashed that check for him. How much was the check for? A mm, little over 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 and some odd cents. Hmm. Was he by himself? Yeah, uh, when he come in. I cashed the check and he had a few drinks. <laughs> he didn't seem to carry his liquor well. Uh, Mark Greenan was with him the next time I looked around. Mark Greenan? Yeah, uh, he's a boomer that works for the power company now and then. Uh, most of the time he hangs around pool halls and saloons. You say he was with this Quinn fellow when you cashed that check? No, not when I cashed it, but as soon as Quinn started drinking, he kept bringing his money out, and, well, pretty soon this Greenan fellow kind of horned in on him, and, and Quinn started buying him drinks. Did they leave together? Yeah. Just about time I closed up, they went out together. I ran them to again when I went out. Hey, they were standing out on the sidewalk arguing about something when I come by. No, can't stay no longer. I gotta go. Gotta get me a room and go to sleep. I gotta get up at 6.30 and catch the train to work. Ah, come on. I got a swell room at my house. You can sleep there. You don't have to spend no money for no room, pal. You can sleep at my place. I'll drive you down to the train in the morning. What in? I got a rig. No. No, I don't want to. I gotta go back to the hotel. Oh, come on, pal. I can put you up for the night. You'll sleep like a baby. Okay, pal. I'll go home with you. I don't want to go to the street. Boy. You always see it. Well, I, I went down across the street to Kiesa's Cafe, and I had a talk with the cook. Yeah, I used to know him up in San Francisco, and when I come out, I saw this fellow Quinn and Greenan sitting at the table eating, and they were still arguing about Quinn going home with Greenan. You know where this fellow lives? Uh, Greenan, I mean. Nope. But I guess the power company can tell you, though. Think I'll mosey over and find out. <laughs> I'm trying to find out where a fellow named Green lives. I understand he works for you people now and then. Well, just a minute. I'll see if I have his name in my file. Okay. Uh, know his first name? I think it's Martin. Martin. Here we are. Martin Greening lives on March Street. Rents from a Mr. Henry. When did he work last? Well, I really don't know, but last time we called him was about three weeks ago. I see. Well, thank you, miss. You're welcome, Sheriff. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Henry. I'm fine, Sheriff. <laughs> uh, you looking for somebody? Well, yes and no. I'm checking up one of your tenants, I reckon. Fellow by the name of Greening. Oh, that loafer. <laughs> uh, sure, he lives in the house right back of mine on the corner. Been behind his rent for months. I told him he had to get out or pay up. Well, did he pay up? Nope. Give me five bucks on account, though. When was this? About three weeks ago. You gonna let him stay on here? Well, just about another week. Then I'm going to throw him and that wife of his out on the street. Married, is he? Well, he claims to be. I doubt it. How do they get along? Always fighting. Woke me up the other night where they were arguing out on the back porch. That guy come over next morning and he borrowed a chisel from me. Just as cool as you please. Said his wife had been quarreling about him fixing the door. Hmm. Mighty little... I say mighty little thing to have an argument about. Yeah, I got you. That's what I thought, too. But uh, that's the time he gave me the five bucks, so I ain't kicking. Are they home now? Nope. Now, he left early this morning. Uh, she's across the street, though, visiting again. She's always getting around. Uh, you got a phone, Mr. Henry? Sure. Come right inside. Thanks. I'll call Chief Cook and get some of my men out to look for Mr. Greeting. Hey, what's he done, Sheriff? I'm not sure yet. Well, there's the phone, Sheriff. Thanks. Give me the chief of police. Charlie, what 
what's on your mind. I got an idea. We'll find out something about Charlie Quinn when we get through with this house. Whose house is it? A fellow named Greening and his wife live here. Greening's a lineman for the power company. He's the last person seen with Charlie Quinn. Where is this Greening? Got my boys out looking for him now. We'll have him down at the office by the time we get back. Come on, let's see if there's anybody home. He's not there laying low. They are here. The man who owns this place said Greening's wife was getting about the neighborhood someplace. Hey, you guys, what you want? Hey, who are you, lady? What's it to you? Might be a lot. I'm Sheriff Younglove, and this is Chief of Police Cook. They're looking for Martin Greening. Know him? He's my husband. Yeah? Yeah, don't you like it? Maybe. In that case, you can open the door for us. We want to look the place over. Who's going to make me do it? Nobody. But unless you want to go to jail now, you'll open up. Oh, all right. Where do I find the key? Just a minute. I'll go in first, if you don't mind. Oh, suspicious, ain't you? Sometimes it pays to be. What do you mean by that crack? You know what I mean. You two guys ain't got no right tramping around my house. That's what you think. Now, Bill, bring that woman in here. Okay, go on in. Well, take a look at the little toys I found on the dresser, all ready for work. Huh, 32 and a 38, eh? Yeah. Ought well, to be easy to compare the bullets in one of these with the ones in Quinn's body. You won't find no bullets. How do you know? I ain't talking. Let's take a look in the kitchen, Bill. Yeah. Come on, Mrs. Greening. Well, don't you ever clean this place up? What's it to you? I can see you're going to be a helpful so. Well, the kitchen's clean enough. Yeah. Too clean. What do you mean? Floor is dirty, but somebody washed the mop boards and part of the floor here by the door. The door's been scrubbed, too. Sure, I... I always keep the place clean. Yeah. You got a hammer around here? Right in the drawer there. What do you want it for? Never mind. Hey, what are you trying to do to that door? Take it off the hinges. What for? You'll find out. So, Bill, take a look. Blood. That's right. Blood on the bottom of the door. You forgot to scrub under there, Mrs. Greeny. So what? Take that oil cloth off the table. There's some more blood, Bill. Yeah, I see it. You think we ought to take her in now? Sure. Come on, Mrs. Greeny. We're arresting you. What for? For murder. No. No, I never done it. Martin, he done it. I never had no hand in it. I never killed nobody. Save it till we get to the office. Your husband ought to be there by now. On the way to the office, the woman talked volubly. By the time the officers had reached headquarters, they had a complete story of the woman's side of the crime. Armed with their revelations, they faced the sullen greening. All right, greening, you might as well stop stalling. We know you were in the saloon with Quinn, and you left with him. You were heard to invite him to your home. When we found the body, it had two heavy pieces of wire wrapped around it. We found the cable from which that wire was taken in your house. I don't know nothing about no wire. Oh, yes, you do. We checked with the foreman on the last job you worked on. He says he gave you permission to take a piece of wire like that we found. He's lying. I don't think he is, Greenan. Why did you shoot Quinn? I never shot nobody. Your wife says you did. Ah, she's lying, too. It won't do you any good to keep on calling people liars, Greenan. You ain't got nothing on me. I think we have. I'm going to reconstruct your crime for you. Go ahead. He left the restaurant with Charlie Quinn on Saturday night. Huh. You took him home with you. He was drunk. You had been drinking, but you were used to it. You could uh. stand it. He couldn't. You got him to your house. You took him into the kitchen, sat him down at the table, and then you shot him in the back. No, I didn't. What's that? Oh, that, uh, my gun accidentally went off, Greening. Uh, you had me scared for a minute. What did you do with the money, Greening? I spent... I didn't get no money. How much was there? Uh, I didn't count it. But you did get it. No, I never got it. Why did you shoot him twice? Well, I wanted to be... I never shot him at all. Listen, Greening, we got you, and we're going to make this charge stick. Now, start talking. Oh, hour after hour, the merciless grilling continued. Little by little, the iron will of the man Greening began to break. And we're prepared to stay here all night if we have to, Greening. They got just as much time as you have. Why did you kill Charlie Quinn? All right, all right. I'll tell you about it. I'm sick of these questions, questions, questions. Get started. Well, it's like Barcella said. I met this guy in the saloon, and I got him to go home with me. When we got home, uh, the old lady was waiting. Who's that bum? 
Uh, shut your trap and open the door. Why would you pick that up? Oh, come on. Help me get him in the kitchen. What are you going to do with him? Well, I'm going to roll him for his dough. Oh, how much he's got? Uh, about 50 bucks. Ah, nuts. I thought you was going to get some dough. This will do us. Yeah, for a couple of days. I thought you were going to hold up our cellar's place. I was, but I met this guy. Ah, you yellow. That's all that's wrong with you. Well, listen, you. Don't you call me yellow. What are you going to do when this bird squawks? He won't squawk. How do you know? Well, I'll fix him so he won't. I bet you will. Come on, pull that chair out. I'm tired of holding this guy up. Ah, you think you've done a day's work. Ah, that bird's heavy. Well, come on. Where's his dough? Give me time. I'm getting it. Get away from me. Get out of my pocket. Pipe Don't down. Me. Get up. Hey. Hey, what's coming off here? Give me back that pocketbook. You can't do that to me. Give me my money. Shut your trap. Let him have it. <laughs> You bungling fool, you didn't kill him. Well, I can't help it if he's made out of iron. Well, don't stand there, do something. Well, what do you expect me to do? Give it to him again, you fool. Oh, I ain't got the heart to finish the poor guy. I've already shot him once. This ain't no time to get chicken hearted. The neighbors will be in here in a minute. Yeah, maybe they didn't hear it. Well, you've got to get him out of here and do something. I, I can't do nothing. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Oh, well, that's the way it happened. I shot him again to get him out of his misery. Never occurred to you not to shoot him in the first place, did it? No. You don't expect to get away with us, do you, Greeny? Why not? He wasn't much good. He didn't have no reason to keep on living. Just a philanthropist, aren't you? How'd the body get out to the creek? Well, we kept it around the house for two or three days, and then I hired a rig down in the livery stable and hauled it out there and dumped it in the creek. Well, Greeny, guess we'll keep you in jail a while. Charged with murder. Ah, uh, listen, copper. I'll get you for this. Don't make no difference to me how long it takes or when it happens, but I'll get you. You're barking up the wrong tree, Greeny. You committed the crime, not me, and you're going to pay for it. Yeah, that's what you think. I'll get out, see? They won't keep me in jail forever. I'll beat this rap. You can't hang it on me, see? I'll be out of the jug in less than a week. And when I do, I'll give you ten times more than that other guy got. No, I don't think you will, Greeny. This is one trip you're not coming back from. <laughs> Eminent gasoline authorities of this generation, the drivers of police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment of cities like Los Angeles, Oakland, Fresno, and many, many other cities and counties throughout California, overwhelmingly endorse and use Rio Grande Crest. And that's not all. Now the state of California and the government of these United States have recognized the quality of Rio Grande Crest and have specified it for use in their automotive equipment. Moreover, you will join your voice with the mighty chorus of high officials endorsing this extraordinary motor fuel when you roll into the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood and get a tank full of Rio Grande cracked, the gasoline that is first in public service, first in the favor of city and county officials, first in the tanks of state and federal emergency equipment. And now again we hear from Sheriff Hatton. Sheriff Young Love was right. Greening was tried, convicted, and sentenced to life imprisonment. He repeated his threats to the sheriff and to the prosecuting attorney with the result that he was sentenced without recommendation of parole or pardon. He later died in prison, again proving conclusively that crime does not pay. Thank you, Sheriff Hoskins. Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 217 regarding a dead body. The victim is identified as Charlie Quinn, murdered. Suspect in this case sentenced to life from imprisonment. That's all. So conclusive. Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for Rio Grande.